I'm reporting from Hondo, Texas, and I know you've heard all about chemtrail. Well, I caught a chemtrail guy red-handed. We're going to talk to Umberto Vivanco about cloud seeding. He's a cloud seeding pilot. Okay, Umberto, this is your cloud seeding airplane. It is. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, this is a uh, Piper Comanche 250 uh, carbureted, and it's been uh, rigged with the flare rack for uh, cloud seeding purposes. So nothing else is really out of the ordinary, you know, from the plane aside for, for that and the, the button to ignite. Okay, so let's look at these things. So these are individual flares. Yes. And tell us about the material that you so put in the cloud. It's basically just silver iodide. It's injected into the cloud. Well, the cloud will actually uh, suck it up from from the airplane once you you know you you engage, um, and it'll just it's a condensation nuclide. It'll just kind of collect more moisture and hence more the rain. We don't make the rain. We just help it rain more than it would. Now we're in Texas, uh, where the season runs. I think you said from spring into the fall. Yes. Uh, so about early April to late September is mainly the you know the heavier period. And how often will you fly? Well, um, it really depends. Last week I did about three missions. Uh, this week I think I'm going to do maybe one or two. Um, and there are weeks where we don't. You know, it's just dry. We have a high pressure system flowing through and it just really kills off any moisture in the area. So uh, it really depends on what Mother Nature provides. And how does it work? How does a typical mission work? Um, early morning I would normally get a message uh, indicating the possibility of chance for the day, so either it's no chance to high chance and anything in between. Um, anything other than a no chance, I usually stand by with the plane, either in Honda or Uvalde, and uh, um, I just wait for the meteorologist to say, you know what, in the next hour I need you to get airborne and head out to the north or give me a direction to go and find a thunderstorm and see it. Now you're talking to a meteorologist who's looking at live radar and he has a, a phone link with you, correct? Yeah, so we have, we communicate uh, just the same uh, radio frequency, it's a different frequency we use, but um, it's live communications and as he sees the thunderstorms develop or fade, he'll either tell me to go hit it or, you know, forget and go to another cell. Now of course you are flying towards thunderstorms, yes. the rest of us are flying away from them, <laughs> yeah. so it can get a little hairy sometimes, can it? Uh, it can. Um, you know, through training and as the more you do it, you become more familiar on what spots in the thunderstorms you want to approach. Um, it's all basically just VFR, it's just trying to find the, the place where the most uplift is into the, into the cell and, you know, ignite your flares at the, the right time. So you attempt to... Uh, fire the flares and have the uplift bring it up into the storm, you yes. generally don't go in the cloud. Correct. Uh, we try to stay, you know, below and away. As, uh, you know, we, we get just as close as we need to to get into that part of the, the cell where it's developing the lift and inject it into that and the, the cloud will do its thing from there. Okay, so we're looking at the flares here and you've got, uh, I think you said a total of 40? Well, it's 38 per side. So I have 38 on this side and 38 on the other side of the plane. And they burn for how long? Approximately 40 seconds each. And you can uh, fire these individually? Yes. So I have a button inside that I will uh, activate a flare, and if I need to activate two flares per run, I'll, you know, I'll activate one, then the other uh, right after. And how long does a typical mission last? A mission can last anywhere from about an hour to three or four hours. Uh, you know, sometimes we may have to stop and fuel up and go back up if there's still thunderstorms developing in the area. Um, Sometimes I'll fly 40 minutes just to get to a cell, and then the seating may take anywhere from 15, 20 minutes to 40 minutes, depends on how hard it is to find the, the right spot. And who pays for it? Um, basically the counties. Uh, it's all paid for by uh, the counties, you know, and I don't get too involved with, you know, that side of the, the business, but um, it's divided by into the counties, whichever county decides to opt in or opt out. Okay, thanks, Roberto. Absolutely, you're welcome, Paul.